Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the beauty of mathematics part five. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find the link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I should say is while the, while the title is Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics. This is actually the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. So you can see back in 2017, 2018, it peaked just under $1 trillion. It made it up to almost $900 billion, not quite. And then it has come back down to the red line and has essentially been tracking the fair value for a couple years now. Now, if you look at prior cycles, we've seen similar patterns where we have these bubbles that take place above our upper dash green line. And then we have our bear market slash accumulation phases that then dip down below our fair value regression line. So the red line is quote unquote the fair value of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. The current fair value is at 435 billion. The actual market capitalization of all cryptocurrency is 395 billion. So we're still approximately 9% undervalued despite the recent move up by Bitcoin. Okay, so we're still slightly undervalued. Now, bear in mind, we have been significantly undervalued earlier this year. We, you know, back in March, we came, we came down pretty far. As you can see, we were tracking the fair value. And then we had the, you know, the, the black swan event, if you want to call it that, and, and we, we dropped significantly, almost to the, the green lower bound line, which you can see we haven't really touched since the very beginning, but it's always been, you know, we, we've, we've generally been right above it at some point during the cycle. Here, you can see we reached it right here. Here, the closest we came was, was this point. Now, for the last, you know, two years or so, we've essentially been tracking the fair value of Bitcoin. And, I, you know, if you follow the channel, one of the things we talk about is looking at these bubble phases and, and recognizing you know, the fact, well, I mean, you know, f recognizing when and where they occur. So just by hiding the the accumulation phase down here, we can identify these peaks and recognize that, you know what, despite the bullish momentum recently, as a whole, the cryptocurrency market capitalization is not within bubble territory right now. You, of course, have different assets that are in bubble territory, but the asset class as a whole is not according to this analysis. Now, if we, if we go a step further, as we've done many times, and we look at the valuation versus the trend line, so we're just looking at the percent difference, um, you know, or the, the division of this, the, the actual valuation divided by the fair valuation, this is what you get. You notice the three descending peaks, and we have our general undervaluation territory. And you can know, right, that there are some similarities, you know, each time we, t we talk about the, the beauty of mathematics video, we do this once a month at the beginning of the month. Every time we do this, I try to talk about something slightly different so we have a little bit more information. You can see some similarities, actually, of this cycle and the second, the second accumulation phase. So this was the first accumulation phase. This was the second. This was the third. This is the fourth. There's, there are actually some similarities between the second one and the fourth one, albeit the fourth one is has these trends somewhat extended. So you notice that first peak down to approximately 30% undervalued or 70% of the fair value, a move back up, a move back down, back up, move back down, can see the similar pattern and if and if a lot of people right I don't think this is true again I've said this many times but just for the sake of being more all-encompassing and appealing to people who have different views on the market than me but you know some people I found they have they have different views on the market as me but they still like the 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 tools that I provide okay so they they still like these types of tools they just think the peak is going to come earlier than I do and, and, you know, so if you do think the peak is going to come in, say, late 2021, so approximately a year from now, and you think that this analysis is, is a pretty good one to identify where we might peak at, expecting diminishing returns, it looks like we would peak approximately, you know, 800% or so above the fair valuation. And if the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is overvalued by 800%, and by the end of, let's just say 2022, the very beginning of 2022, 
if um, or end of 21, 2021, if the fair value is 900 billion and we're overvalued by 800%, then it would put a theoretical bubble at approximately 8.1 trillion, which would you know look something potentially like that. Okay, and this is for people who like the idea or who buy into the idea that we'll see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin by the end of next year. Okay. Now, what if the peak comes in 2023? Well, it could be that we're being a little bit optimistic with how, how this pattern is precisely playing out compared to how it did in the second accumulation phase. It could be that, you know, this was our first test down, our, our first pump up, so you can see that trend, but maybe this was the, you know, the, this was the, the dip here, maybe corresponds to this one. This purple one could correspond to our recent pump, and then the yellow one could come back down at approximately you know, 25 to 30% undervalued. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin needs to crash. It could just mean that it goes back down to 12K and potentially a lot of other cryptocurrencies lose valuation in that time period. You know, something like that could cause us to come back down to this regime. It doesn't mean that it's, you know, the end of the world by any means. But of course, the one major thing would have to happen would be that Either Bitcoin would need to lose value because it controls, you know, a majority of the market capitalization, or we would just need to move sideways for an extended period of time. Because if the total cryptocurrency market capitalization moves sideways for a while, then looking at the regression curve, which is monotonically increasing, it'll put the valuation slowly decreasing against it. So remember, if the fair value goes, if if the actual if the actual uh, market cap just goes sideways, then we're going to get further and further away from what the fair valuation is. Therefore, one way we could get to it would be an immediate retracement of Bitcoin back down to, you know, uh, dropping down, a, a, you know, a couple thousand dollars or so, but watching other assets drop significantly more, um, a short term thing. Or if, if Bitcoin were to just go sideways for a while and the market capitalization were to go sideways for a while, we could also reach it, which means that the price doesn't have to dump or anything. It could just mean that we get into a pretty humdrum period for an extended period of time. So if that were to happen, if it's, if it's more, say, 2023, we might see something like this. And, and and noting that these cycles are you know generally looks like they're 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 lengthening and and one of the things if you're if you're a stem major maybe you've heard of the full width half max and and I, I did not look at this in this video but I you know just by eyeballing it if you look at the full width at half the max so you basically take the maximum you go down half and then you figure out what the width is at that point this could help you know this could help um look at, at at the idea of LinkedIn cycles. The reason why I didn't do it here was, well, I mean, clearly, why would I draw it to this point if the price is way over here? So you can see that this was just a, a curve that I drew, and that's where the curve happened to to overlay when I, when I curved it from this point to that point to get a nice smooth curve. But you can imagine, you know, taking the full width half max could be useful um, in, in situations uh, like this. So one of the things we you know, I, I want to talk about is is just the idea that if if we do peak in 2023 and we come up to this level and the total market capitalization is overvalued by 700 percent, you might say, oh, well, that's lower than if it peaked in late 2021, where it might be 800 percent. Well, the overvaluation might be lower, but the fair value at the time would actually be closer to 1.5 trillion. And if we're overvalued by 700%, then that would put the peak at approximately $12 trillion. Again, it depends on exactly what you choose, whether you say it's 700%, 800%, ident you know, figuring out exactly what the fair value is on whatever day you think it will peak. But again, as I've said many times, $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion dollars, right? And, and that's generally what I say, because after all, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? Um, and, you know, if you think about it, especially in the world we live in today, a few trillion among friends be kind of takes on a different meaning, uh, considering how much uh, how much currency is just kind of being printed um, at will to, you know, to compensate for what's going on in the world. So the, the purpose of this video is just to provide a monthly update to where the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is. It, I understand that it could get somewhat repetitive, but I do think there's value in systematically staying up to date with where the fair value is and where we are in terms of a, of a potential bubble. 
And despite Bitcoin's bullish momentum recently, because the rest of the asset class has not picked up steam, you can see that we're still tracking the fair valuation. And generally speaking, while we have been going you know, up and down since 2019, it's generally tracking upwards, okay? Just like it did during the last cycle, just like it did during the cycle before that and the cycle before that, okay? It's generally tracking upwards. You can see the slopes are reducing um, each time. And, and we'll have to, I mean, it's hard to know exactly where this one will end up because we're currently in the middle of it. But again, I, I would anticipate a continued tracking of the fair valuation before going into bubble territory. With that said, always a chance of a short-term bubble. We had one in 2019. It took us up, you know, maybe a little bit more than half between the red line and the upper green line. If we're above the green line, it means we are nearing the end of our speculative bubble. And you can see that each time we, we get to that regime, we're getting... Uh, you know, we're not getting as high above it as we had the previous time, right? So this one's not as far above the green line as this one was, which is not as far above the green line as this one was. And one of the ways you can visualize that, again, is to just look at this trend and recognize that we are decreasing every time we get to that overvaluation territory. So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Remember, we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. So if you're looking for exclusive content, um, we have a weekly premium report, a weekly premium video, a risk dashboard, which is what I use to trade, a private Telegram alerts channel, and a few other things. I also provide more frequent updates on this as opposed to every month. It's every two weeks or so, uh, two, two, to, two to two and a half weeks. So there's just some more perks, right, that come with it. So if you're interested in it, check it out, into thecryptoverse.com. Remember to subscribe to the channel at the very least. Help me get to 50,000 subscribers by the end, of the end of the year. And also, if you do want to chat with a growing community that I am fairly active in, you can check out my Telegram channel, which you can also find in the description below. Please give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.